internet, welcome to Azales TV. This is part 17 of my insane wooden clock build. It's going to be a great video this week, I promise. Stay tuned, keep watching. Is it dark in here? Why is it so dark in here? Anyway, I thought I'd open up today's episode with a viewer question I got from Jim Steinbacher. What a fantastic name, by the way. He wants to know, can I just move servo A table into servo B table? Shifting onto degrees, so they're both running off a sine wave. And I covered that a couple of episodes back, quite a few episodes back, for, uh, rather. But I've had an idea for a visual presentation, so let's have a look. So, this is how this currently works I'll press the button. This moves around in a smooth sine wave fashion, and this one moves in a sort of jaggedy, hand plotted thing, which makes up the difference to make this go around in a circle. Like that. It's a bit noisy, but it works. It's a smooth circle. This is what it sounds like without the crank arms attached to the Geneva gear. So they're all held down, you're just hearing the servos moving and that's it. That sounds a bit better because there's nothing transferring noise into this and all the rest of it. Now let's show you how they move when they're both being run by a sine wave from one lookup table. Now that's a lot smoother. So this is the first movement. And here's the second movement. So two sine waves is clearly better, more smooth than one sine wave and one whatever this is doing. So why can't we use two sine waves? Let me show you. I've taken off the Geneva crank arm, put a bit of wood on top with a hole in the middle for it to fit over the axle post it note stuck down and I can trace the locus described by these intersecting arms with a pen placed through the holes in the ends of the crank arms. So we're left with this pattern marked on the paper. And that pattern is exactly the same as the one I plotted in the previous video where I showed the locus I'd get if I tried to plot from two sine waves compared to the locus that I want, which needs to trace out the circle for here. So why does this happen? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. First of all, the difference in length between this crank arm here on the Geneva gear and the one on the servo, it's not much of a difference, but it's enough that I'll get a full range of motion from left to right on this. And I only require a very small amount of motion on the servo itself, because these servos, while they can go with the full 180, I've deliberately designed it so that if I can only get servos which can only move 90 degrees, it will still work. So if I show you by slowly backdriving, these, these servos aren't powered, so I'm not damaging them, but I'm being very careful anyway because you shouldn't really do this with servos. But if I move this manually, like I said, move this all over to one side, but the servos only moved about 45 degrees ish. Same as if I move it the other way. So I've not gone a full 180 on the servo, but I have on here. So already there's not a direct linear response. The second reason is these crank arms are off-centered. I've done that deliberately so that this pivot here is in line with this pivot here to within like a hundred of a millimeter or so. So that means that where the servo is now and the crank arm is here, it's the same as if the servo is in the same place and the crank arm is down here. So it sort of evens things out a bit, so there's more or less the same amount of motion, there's the same sort of degree of moving from this side to the other side. So the way it moves from there to there, it's more or less the same than if it moved the other way. And that again, it tries to even everything out and makes the servos move a bit smoother. But unfortunately it means that 
by now there's no linearity or relationship with how these two move and that gives us our figure here which is very different from the perfect circle we want and that's why I'm having to hand code the truth tables now I can get away with driving just one of them with a sine wave because pairing just one servo is not related to anything I can move this left and right however I want I can have a sawtooth wave or one I can have a triangle wave all it needs to know is that's the minimum place and that's the maximum position and to drive between the two relatively smoothly however it sees fit but as soon as I add a second servo this position is now locked to this servo and then for this crank arm I've got a triangle so I've got a very rigid structure so this servo has to keep up with how this is moving instead of this being able to move anywhere it wants as the servo moves left and right it's now fixed to this arc so while this can move in a sine wave this has to make up the difference so this can move around very very slowly but this has to follow this all the time especially when it gets to these ends here to pull it round the corner and that's why this jerks when it gets to here and also on this side because I've had to plot the numbers manually when it gets to here there's a lot of play suddenly so trying to place this server accurately and trying to get it so that it can move between these points very smoothly is very difficult the same for the bottom here where this servo is barely moving at all and I have all this slack so there's a lot of play there which I have to take out with this servo so in my original plot I get these flat parts here and here it moves around fairly smoothly gets to here and all of a sudden I've got all this slack and that's why it jumps around a bit I managed to negate that by having the sine wave on one servo at least and that's made it a bit easier but of course I'm still moving it manually on this servo so it's very shaky but I've done a bit of work off camera and I think I have a solution for getting this to run much more smooth than it currently does right let's tidy haha <laughs> right here we go so I've got the plot I did originally where I plotted every point every, each 360 points and it's rough as a bear's ass, as you can see we want to do something about that so I've gone through and I've replotted but instead of all, every point I've plotted only every tenth point as I've done before the very very first time I did it I've did it in microseconds as opposed to degrees so I'm actually writing direct microseconds to the servo and that makes it a bit more, a bit more smooth and what I plan to do is interpolate the numbers between 0 and 10 degrees, 10 degrees to 20 degrees and so on throughout the entire range up to 359 degrees and then back to 0 so instead of having actual points where the server jumps from one point to another like that it breaks that up into single degree increments so it'll break up into 10 slots and then smoothly the servo goes from there to there all the way along that line now the tricky part is going to be this interpolation between the points so I'll show you on another bit of paper what needs to be done so let's say we have this point down here and this is 10 degrees so I'm trying to work right upside down so I hope this works another one up here which is 20 degrees away uh, let's see if I can do this now to make the servo go from there to there, that's a big jump here. We want it to move in one degree increments. So we plot this line up here like this. So what we do, we take this as a value. We take this as a value. And that's our slope. So we've got a 10 degree slope. We split that up into 10 equal bits. And we say, okay, we divide it up and we've got one degrees. So now we know that we can go from here, we can add one each time and that gives us this point here so this will work with any number so you've got this one here, you've got this one here 
we can have another point here which is say 25 for example and it's not as not as tight a curve so again we split it up into 10 degree 10 bits 10 equal pieces and that's our, that's our slope value and that's half a degree and we're going up from 20 to 25 so instead of jumping from there to there we're actually climbing up slowly so I printed off another blank template for the lookup table calculated every tenth point I've measured it again done it as I said before in microseconds so now we'll use the interpolation to find out what this missing data is now there's a couple of ways we can do that there's a hard way where we're filling it out completely by hand calculating it on a calculator or there's the easy way which is also the hard way because we don't know how to do that yet which is use computer to do it guess which way I chose I've written a simple sketch and I've got six values in a lookup table here just a very short lookup table and when I press a button on the Arduino it will look through it will step through each of these in turn displaying both the index number from 0 to 5 and the index value itself which is this lot so I've got this over here now the next step will be to interpolate these values so instead of this number to this number for example it will step through and I'll have nine divisions between those so I have ten numbers in total from there to there so it'll give me a much smoother range of numbers and I'll put that function down in here somewhere so it will find th this number in the array this number work out the interpolation slope and then add numbers between these points and then create a second lookup table or generate them on the fly and then print them here also Oh, oh boy, we are back several hours into coding and I've got our six points we had before and I've got an interpolation routine here. So I've got some new variables, I've got the interpolate variable here, we've got n which is the counter which steps through each interpolation point, we've got our initial slope, the start and end. What's happening is we are stepping through the array we are setting the start of the slope as the current index and the end of the slope as what's going to be the next index in the sequence when it's at the end it loops back to the start it calculates the difference between those two and calculates the slope here and then it steps through from 1 to 10 and it adds that slope value there to the interpolation value so it creates a new variable interpolation it creates a new value rather and it generates the missing data so if we hit the button on the Arduino so is our initial data here there and there so we've got 2005 and 1961 which is these values and these ones here it's calculated to be the missing data in the middle and it's done that for each sequence when it's got to the end, I've got through there for some reason. Here we go, it's just one now. When it gets to the end, 1765, which is that, it counts, it counts back up again to the next value. So we've got 1981, and then the next value after that will be 2005. So we know this works. The next step is going to be adding all of our points into here, which you've already got in the spreadsheet so that's easy to paste in and taking out the things like these commands here which print out the all the data because I don't need all this we just want the start and end values here and the interpolated points in the middle here oh boy here goes nothing I've got the full data set pasted here I've got rid of all the stuff that prints out the extra bits all this serial print commands it'll just print a lookup table now that's it fantastic never take all this copy it we can put it in our website which converts everything into comma delimited text here we go, 
360 lines so we know it works we have the full lookup table now we can copy that and paste that into our code right I've put the new lookup table into the old code which drives one server with the sine wave and another one with the rough lookup table I had before so let's see how that goes oh yes it's alive and actually properly alive this time not that sort of crunching noise it was doing before it's still lagging a bit where it gets to here it's still got a drill period and then it sort of yanks it round and I can see that on the where's the new one I can't find the new one I saw on the old graph but when it gets to here it sort of stops and then pulls it around in a curve I think I can sort that out at a later date but for now I'm not too fussed because it works and it sounds a lot smoother than it did before anyway so that is it for this week I've got a thing working I've made the code and it's kicked my ass but I've got it working I've learned a whole ton of stuff trying to work out how to do the conditional statements to get to the end of the array and look back again and that was fun so next week I'm going to be adding the real-time clock chip to the circuit and then I'm going to work out how to port the code over to a standalone microcontroller like these so that'd be fun so tune in next week next Tuesday to see what else I'm up to if you're not already subscribed then hit that subscribe button and click on a notification bell so you know what time I upload now, until then thanks very much for watching leave in the comments down below like share and subscribe and I'll see you next Tuesday have a great week